William Adolphe Bougereau was a 19th century French academic painter who was one of the most dominant figures in art during his lifetime. In his realistic genre paintings, he used mythological themes, making modern interpretations of classic subjects with an emphasis on the female human body. In his own era, Bougereau was one of the most reputable and commercially successful artists in the Western world, showered with official acclaim and prizes, hugely popular with the art-buying bourgeoisie, and a respected and loved teacher. William Adolphe Bougereau was born on November 30th, 1825, in La Rochelle, a traditionally Protestant city on France's southwest coast. His father was a modestly successful wine and olive oil merchant and a Roman Catholic, while his mother was from a middle-class Calvinist family. Compromising on their children's religious education, they decided to raise their sons as Catholic and their daughters as Protestant. Bougereau's upbringing was strict, but he developed a deep love for his seaside home and its local customs, which endured throughout his life. At 12, he was sent to live with his uncle, a Catholic priest, possibly to prepare the boy for a career in the church. During this period, which Bougereau later recalled as the happiest time of my life, he was exposed to classical literature, outdoor excursions, and a new depth of familial affection. A few years after moving to live with his uncle, Bougereau was sent to the Catholic College in Pont, where he continued his religious and secular education. At Pont, Bougereau was tutored in drawing by Louis Sage, a follower of the great neoclassical painter Jean-Auguste Dominique Angres. But his studies were interrupted by his father, who demanded that he join the family at their new home in Bordeaux, in southeast France. Here, the young William Adolphe became acquainted with Charles Marionneau, a local artist and historian who helped him to gain admission to the Municipal School of Painting and Drawing. Though he was under pressure to contribute to his father's business, Bougereau thus resumed his artistic training financing his education by creating hand-colored lithographs for food products. He excelled in this mercenary work, eventually saving enough to move to Paris, which he did in 1846 at the age of 20. Following a recommendation from the municipal school in Bordeaux, Bougereau was invited to study under the accomplished neoclassical painter Françoise Édouard Picot. Like the other students in Picot's studio, Bougereau worked on the basic elements of figurative painting and drawing using lithographs, plaster casts, and live models. Barely subsisting on his meager savings, he nevertheless gained admission to the prestigious École Royale des Beaux-Arts, whose curriculum focused on painting, anatomy, perspective, history, antiquity, and sculpture. Bougereau's lofty ambition was to win the Grand Prix de Rome, a prize for outstanding young artists, which included sponsored study at the French Academy in the Villa Medici in Rome. After two unsuccessful attempts, he achieved his goal with the grand historical painting Zenobia found by shepherds on the banks of the Eryx, 1850, on a theme previously tackled by Nicolas Poussin. Bougereau left for Rome in January 1851, spending the next three years refining his technical skills and studying art collections, churches, architecture, and sculpture throughout the Italian peninsula. His scholarship ended in 1854, but instead of returning to Paris, he traveled back to his hometown of La Rochelle. Following his formative experiences in Italy, 
Beaujolais' career was defined by the ceaseless accumulation of praise and commissions and by the annual exposure of his work at the Paris Salon. He stuck doggedly to the neoclassical style in which he had been trained, and the display of his work at the Salon generated enormous interest from middle and upper class patrons and created opportunities to decorate state buildings and churches. In 1856, his prestige was further heightened by a commission from Emperor Napoleon III, for whom he completed the unashamedly propagandist work, Napoleon III Visiting the Floods of Tarascon, showing the emperor's humanitarian visits to areas of the Rhone and Loire valleys, recently devastated by flooding. Demand for Beaujolais work was consistent over this period, partly because of his contracts with two powerful art dealers, Paul Durand Ruel and Adolphe Gopil. Indicating his pragmatic and commercialist approach to his work, Bougereau began from around the 1860s to move beyond grand historical and classical subjects, creating quasi-naturalist genre scenes in line with shifting artistic tastes. In practical terms, however, he remained a staunch defender of tradition and was instrumental along with his neoclassical peer, Alexandre Cabanel, in ensuring that Édouard Manet's Déjeuner sur l'herbe was rejected from the 1863 Paris Salon. This led to the establishment of the Salon des Refusés, often seen as synonymous with the birth of avant-garde art. In 1856, Bougereau began a relationship with his 19-year-old model, Nellie Montchablon, with whom he would have three children prior to their marriage in 1866, and another two thereafter. He maintained a luxurious family home and studio in the Montparnasse neighborhood of Paris, and in the summer would travel with his family to La Rochelle, where he often accepted local decorative commissions. While Beaujolais' professional life was one of uninterrupted success, he was granted lifetime membership of the Academy in 1876 and made a commander of the Legion of Honor in 1885, the highest possible distinction for a living artist. His personal life was marked by tragedy. Three of his children died in infancy and their mother, Nellie, died in 1877, events which inspired a series of somber religious paintings. Shortly after Nellie's death, however, Beaujolais began a relationship with another model, the American Elizabeth Jane Gardner, also a notable artist, whom he would marry in 1896, following a two-decade engagement. During this period, Bougereau's influence spread well beyond France, and he became active in artist societies in Belgium, Austria, and Spain. Even in his advanced years, he worked prolifically, never abandoning his traditional methods of painting. Over the last few decades of his life, Bougereau also became an enthusiastic and influential teacher mentoring both male and female artists in the academic style. From 1872 onwards, he taught at the prestigious Académie Julien and became known for advocating the training of female artists within that institution. When Bougereau died in 1905, he was honored by grand funeral processions and memorials, both in Paris and La Rochelle, he is buried in Montparnasse Cemetery in Paris next to Nellie and their children. His big artworks. As early as 1850, William Adolphe Beaujolais painted one of his most famous works, Dante and Virgil in Hell. The painting was inspired by the neoclassical painting style 
and medieval architecture. The dramatic painting is known for the meticulous rendering of the musculature of the two male figures. Pieta, 1876, is considered one of his best religious paintings. It shows Mary holding the body of Jesus Christ after his death and is an expression of the artist's own grief at the loss of his teenage son, Georges. A faint inscription on an urn in the painting mentions the date of his death. During the 1870s, he produced some of his most famous works, like The Comforting Virgin, Nymph et un Satyr, The Spinning Maid, Petty Thieves, Reapers, Charity, and Homer and His Guide. Some renowned interest in Bougereau's work emerged in the 1970s and 80s with major exhibitions in New York, Montreal, and Paris. Around the same time, various monographs and revisionary academic articles cast new light on his influence over 19th century art in France and the United States. His paintings now command high prices at auction and continue to circulate amongst private hands. It is fitting, given his mass appeal during his lifetime, that many of his works also appear on greeting cards, posters, and calendars with images such as Cupid and Psyche, 1890, better known as the first kiss, flooding contemporary Western culture without the artist's name becoming any better known. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. Please give us a thumbs up also, and please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our videos and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following videos.